the Steady On Stronger Together podcast. I am your host, Angie Ballman. About a year ago, I met today's guest, Tala Guerra, when we sat around the same table during a Women Speakers Collective Boot Camp Conference in Chicago, Illinois. After the event, we stayed connected through social media, and when her first book was nearing completion, I was eager to be a part of her launch team and have this opportunity to talk with her one-on-one about the project. Talisee's story is encouraging and inspiring. I think you will find her refreshing as she talks to us about how joy has felt elusive to her much of her life, but she has learned and is still learning along with us that pursuing and choosing joy brings life and hope into places we struggle. Let's listen in. Good morning, at least Central Time, Steady On friends. Uh, it is my delight to welcome Talisee Guerra for our Stronger Together conversation this week. We are going to be talking about Talisee's new book, Joy Like a Mountain. Talisee, what day does it actually launch? Because it's actually not quite in the world yet, right? That's right. Yeah, the book launches this coming Sunday on September 27th. Yay, and are you so excited? I'm beside myself. Yeah, I'm so excited. (laughs) I'm so excited for you. And I just learned just right before we went on that Talisi is in the process of birthing two things because she has a baby too in November also. So I was saying you crazy lady trying to do all this at the same time. But I'm so excited to um, just talk to you a little bit about this today. Thank you for sharing some of your time with us. And um, Talisi and I met about a year ago already in Chicago at a Women Speakers Collective boot camp event. Um, and we sat at the same table and we've connect, we've stayed connected on Facebook since then, but this is the first time that I've got to talk to her, talk to you again. And I'm so I'm just really looking forward to catching up with you a little bit and talking to you about this project. And Talisee is a Christian author and communicator, a lot of experience in children's ministry and training volunteers. Is that right? Yep, that's right. Yep. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. on staff at a, at a church in our previous location for about eight and a half years as a director of children and family ministries. Okay. All right. And Langley, British Columbia is your home, right? That's right. Is that yeah. by Vancouver? Do I have that right? Yeah. And yeah, that's all very, I know. That's like the end of my like no- knowledge yeah, right. of that area of the world. Yeah. Right on the West Coast. Yeah. Okay. All right. And you're, you are wife to Ryan, mom to Ava and one on the way. And Avra, I've read, yeah. oh, Avra, thank you for That's correcting right. me. <laughs> thank you for correcting me. And um, also I read somewhere that you guys have this huge uh, strategy game collection, true or false? That's, this is true. Yeah. Talk, we, why I, strategy I, games? Yeah, tell me. <laughs> I, I counted recently because somebody asked me a question that was something like, tell us like a strange fact about yourself. Uh-huh. And so I think we have nearly 200 strategy board games in our collection. That's nuts. <laughs> it is a little bit nuts. I love it. Uh, That's great. <laughs> we just, we, we really enjoy it. My husband, especially he's a, he's the number one gamer in our, in our home, probably in our, um, country uh but he no but I enjoy it as well um and so we haven't played a lot of games recently we've been very busy but we do enjoy sitting down for a board game so so a couple of your favorites that you get out all the time are you like board games that you put on the table more than like video electronic games or both board games board games okay Um, yeah so my favorite is always one that is called dominion it's actually kind of more of a card game okay um, but it's a really great strategy card game. Okay. And uh, man, there are so many to pick from. Oh, are there? Okay. I just, that's my easy go-to because I, I just really like it. Yeah. Yeah. We used to play a game called Settlers, Settlers of Catan. Catan, Catan. Great I'm not game. sure. Are you familiar yep. with that one? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Would that be counted as a strategy game? I don't oh, even definitely. know. Oh, definitely. Okay. <laughs> we kind of call it like a gateway game. Like it's the entry. It's the okay. entry point to the whole world <laughs> See, of strategy board games. And that's my games. really smart game. <laughs> like I'm just telling you. Like your easy game is my smart because I'm no, better at like sm- it's a smart Uno game. and Yahtzee yeah. are my speed. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I love it. But I say that just because it's kind of out there. People know about it. Yeah. Right? People, yeah. It's, right. you, you could get it in a regular store. And so some yeah. of the games you can't. So Right. Yes. You have to like, yeah, be an expert at certain things. So, <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Well, um, tell me, uh, and I didn't actually pose this to you question um, ahead of time, but just of all the things in the world to write about, why joy? Can I just pose that question to you? Why write about joy? Why is it so important to you? 
Yeah, and I'm sure we'll kind of get into my story a little yes. bit later, but um, joy, I mean, in a way is kind of a strange thing for me to be writing about because mm -hmm. I've always struggled with joy. Okay. Um, I, I have battled mental illness throughout the course of my life and joy has never been a natural <laughs> experience for me. Mm -hmm. And so it's something that God has had me in a process to understand and to learn more about for a long time. Mm. And so I think in, in that sense, it's, it's like a strange thing for me to write about, but also really natural in that I've had to spend a lot of time learning and a lot of time being intentional and digging into what joy is, is all about and how I can um, pursue it in my life. Mm -hmm. And um, my perspective around it has changed a lot since I've done that work. And so um, I guess that would be why mm -hmm. uh, it just sort of is something that brought God has brought into my life as here's a topic I want you to dig into. And that was for personal reasons. Like sure. I needed to learn about it. And, um, as a result, I've been able to share those discoveries with other people. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think, I think something that you said that I want to uh, expand on just a little bit, because I think sometimes we think joy is either something you have or not. Like it's something that either comes easy to someone or not. And what I hear you saying is I wanted it and so I had to learn about how to receive yes. it. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. And so, yeah. And I think that can be encouraging for those of us who maybe like yourself struggle to live. I believe that God has a, an abundance of joy for us to have, right? I believe that. And yeah, yet wholeheartedly. I don't know. I don't know that I always am in that kind of state of receiving it. And I think a lot of that's yeah. my decision and my behavior, my choices. So talk to us, if you will, a little bit about what is joy to you and what is it not, if you will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's a great question because I kind of feel like joy is one of those words that you sort of intrinsically understand, but is hard to like give a definition to mm -hmm. a clear definition to. Um, but if someone were to say to me, Hey, finish this sentence, joy is blank. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of different ways that I could fill in that blank. I could, you could say that joy is an emotion. It's a feeling, it's a sensation of contentment or satisfaction or peace. Uh, joy is happiness. But I think you could also fill in the blank by saying joy joy is a choice. Joy is an action. You know, a lot of people say that about love. Mm -hmm. Love is an emotion that we feel, but it is also the reality is that we don't always feel like mm -hmm. we want to be loving towards other people. And so sometimes we have to choose that we have to choose to act in love towards others. And I really think that joy is like that too. Um, certainly it's not always the natural response when it comes to difficult situations in our lives. But just like we do with love, I think that there are seasons and times in our lives when we have to choose to act in joy in order to sort of live the lives that we were created to live. Mm -hmm. um, in my book, I talk about joy in, in two ways. I like to say that joy is a response and that joy is a responsibility. Mm. And so sort of what I'm saying is that yes, joy is an emotion. It's a feeling, it's a way that you can respond to the situations and the circumstances in your life. And I think that maybe without realizing it, we tend to sort of intrinsically define it for ourselves as an automatic response. Like it's just something that happens when all this, you know, all the pieces are in the right place in our lives and everything lines up just so and the conditions are perfect. And then we laugh or we smile, we feel good. But you also asked me what joy isn't. Mm -hmm. And I would say that joy isn't always an automatic response. In fact, mm -hmm. sometimes it often, it often should be a chosen response. Mm -hmm. um, it's a response that we can choose to pursue even when life is challenging because um, yeah, it's a responsibility. Like I said earlier, right? Like as Christians, yeah. we, have to, we have to dig into that calling that God puts in our hearts and our lives to, to choose joy in our lives. One of the things that I struggle with is a, is a critical self-talk is a, is a being down on myself in my own brain. And I think as, as my relationship with the Lord has deepened, developed, I'm more solid in that. One of the things that brings me joy is something I say to myself, it's a feeling, not a fact. 
right? Like Mm -hmm. when I feel something and that, like, that is a place of like grounding for me, like joy for me in that I know actually the promises of God are dependable. Um, Actually, I am his child and he is pleased with me, even when I'm not pleased with myself. And so sometimes I just, I'm I'm thinking of that as you're talking, because I don't always feel happy or I don't even, even feel kind to myself, but as I've strengthened my relation with God, or it's been strengthened, I do have this core understanding that is solid. And in that, I think I can dig deep and that can be my response, but it is a choice sometimes, right? Especially when you're struggling. Yeah. And it's so, so connected to trusting in God, which I think is what you're saying. Like, yes, it's not always automatic. In fact, like that deep level of trust and joy is almost never automatic. It takes a lot of work and it takes Mm -hmm. a lot of intentionality, but I I think we have to really look at the fact that these are interconnected. They can't Mm -hmm. really be separated from a Christian perspective because when we choose joy in the midst of hard circumstances, we're ultimately choosing to trust in God. We're Mm -hmm. choosing to say to God, like life does not look how I want it to look Mm -hmm. right now. Uh, but I am, I'm going to embrace this sense of peace and contentment and satisfaction in this moment, because I know that you're in control. Mm -hmm. And therefore I know I'm choosing that I don't have to give into worry or stress or fear, all of those different things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the more that we trust in God, the more joy it produces in our lives. And it kind of turns into this cycle where, you know, we get more joy and then we can trust God even further. Mm -hmm. And and more joy. Right. And so, right. um, yeah, there's this really interesting connection there between joy and trust. So like if I were to define what the biblical sort of, uh, narrative of joy is all about, I would say that it's that sense of peace and contentment and, and satisfaction that comes from a deep place of trust in God. Yeah. I know this is going to pass whatever this happens to be. Right. Um, and I know that you are in charge of it, even though I feel like it's not being taken care of the way I want it to be right now. Right. That's, I mean, I think that's the joy that comes. Yes, it is hard. And I was going to ask, like, if it's something that you've had to work for, um, and you write about that so, so well, and if it is a journey and if it does take intentionality, then why should we do it? What does it bring to us? to live that way, you think? Well, I, I think that there, and I'll talk, you know, I've talked about this in the book. There's just some really important things that happen in our lives. When we choose joy, even when life is hard, Mm -hmm. Um, we, we grow as a result of choosing joy and we experience uh, incredible Christian growth in terms of endurance and character and hope. And this stuff comes out of Romans Mm five. And so I think that, you know, when we, when we don't choose it, then we perhaps stunt some of our growth as believers. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. I think it's just, there's, there's so much, um, yeah, there's so much opportunity for us to experience growth and, and intimacy with God. And yeah, um, I think sometimes when we don't do the work to grow in our Christian walk, we think like, I don't, that's too hard. I don't want to do that work. And we ignore Mm -hmm. the fact that carrying it or becoming bitter or becoming closed off is also really hard. Like what we're Mm -hmm. doing when we don't choose it is hard also. And so um, it's just, it's just so good. I think to look at ourselves and say, what is the obstacle to joy in my life. If I don't have it, am I willing to look at it and say, Lord, shine a light on this place, right? So that I might move forward and live in a place of more what you're saying, peace and contentment. And I would add rest even uh, probably Mm -hmm. because my personality is just this, like I, I try to earn my earn grace and earn God's approval by doing right. And that, and he did, that's not, that's not what he wants for me. And so I also, I add that rest on there, that peace, that contentment, that rest, that joy that comes from just knowing we are his and we are loved. Um, so one of the things you talk about is a joy crisis. Mm -hmm. Um, what does that have to do with us? How how do you define a joy crisis? Sure. Uh, whenever I talk about the joy crisis, I always start by just like talking about something that's maybe a little bit more familiar to people, which is the fact that we're in a mental health crisis in our world today. Uh, man, I've, I've quoted this statistic a lot lately, but I'll share it again here. According to the World Health Organization, one in four people in the world will be affected by a mental or neurological disorder at some point in their lives. So roughly 25% of people in the world. Um, mm. and, and that statistic is actually not really any different within the church. 
um, in 2014, Lifeway Research did a put out a study that said that 23% of pastors indicated that they had personally struggled with mental illness at some point in their lives. This is pastors. This is people in church leadership. And so whether inside or outside of the church, these statistics are consistent and they're painting a picture of a world that is in crisis because it is plagued by mental illness. Um, I've worked with teenagers for over a decade now and in, in that time, I've personally just seen this shift and observed this steady incline of anxiety and depression and stress in their lives. In, and young, in the in lives young of young people, people. And teenagers mm-hmm. okay. that we've worked with. And, you know, I see that actually in the world all around mm-hmm. me, but mm-hmm. there it's been really obvious because I've actually like watched the incline happen. Um, and so there's no question that we're, we're in a mental health crisis in our world. But I think there's another layer to it, to this crisis that we need to consider. Um, We're just talking about, you know, what's the definition of joy? What does biblical joy actually look like in scripture? And um, I kind of alluded to this idea that the biblical model of joy is not to just sit around and wait for joy to happen to us. Mm -hmm. The biblical model for joy is to choose and to pursue joy, even in difficult circumstances And even in suffering, because like I said just a minute ago, when we do that, we experience necessary growth in our lives. And I mentioned Romans 5. In Romans 5, verses 3 and 4, it says that we we rejoice in our suffering because suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. hope. Now, maybe like you, I've read these verses a lot in my life. I've never really made this connection before I started really considering how joy is, is connected, but I always just saw it as suffering produces these things. But as I meditated on it from the perspective of joy, I realized there's, there's a, there's, there's a whole nother part to this equation because there's a single word rejoice in there that we have to consider Mm -hmm. and it shows that there's this critical connection between joy and suffering that does this work of producing endurance and character and hope in our lives Mm -hmm. and you know we need to look at the fact that we have this responsibility as believers to pursue biblical joy in our lives and i think this is why because joy and particularly our ability to choose joy in the midst of suffering or in the midst of challenges and hardships which We can't escape from in life, right? We can't get away from that. So this ability to choose joy in that is key to our development as human beings because it's key to growing in endurance and character and hope. So so if we are going to neglect the sort of discipline of choosing joy in these hard times, we're going to disadvantage ourselves when it comes to going through life because we stunt our growth in these key areas, Mm -hmm. which I personally think are essential to life. How do you get through life without endurance and character and hope when Mm -hmm. we're faced with so many hardships in our lives? And so, yes, I think the lack of joy that we are experiencing in our culture today and the overwhelm of sadness and stress and suffering is a crisis. It's a joy Mm -hmm. crisis because there's just too much at stake if we don't address it. Yeah. I, as I, one of the things that as I was thinking about when you were talking just now is how much inside and outside the church inside, just as much, I think we compare our suffering with other people or compare our, even our lives with other people. I see that as a real uh, block to joy when we look at, well, um, when we evaluate our suffering or our struggles against someone else's, what we perceive as their triumphs or their good life, if you will, um, then I think that makes us focus all the more on what's not right in our life. And as, as, and the more that we do that, don't you think it's a, it's a block to these things, these good things, these promises that the Lord offers us that we can receive, but we can't, when our eyes are darting around wondering why we don't have this or that. Yeah, totally. So Mm -hmm. much of the pursuit of joy, I think is getting our focus right and making sure that we're actually focusing our eyes on Jesus and focusing our attention in the right place rather than kind of just letting our mind go to all of these negative places for sure. It's even, I think, moving it not just from me-centered to to Christ-centered, right? To really Mm -hmm. focusing, to shifting our 
uh, eyes, our heart, our heart eyes, if you will, from our circumstances and on to him, because he is solid. Yeah. Our circumstances are going to go on, all, are going to go all over the place yeah. um, during different seasons. And sometimes in the same day, amen, where you're like, this was good. And this was bad and I'm all <laughs> over the place now. Right. But if we can have this solidness, I think the joy comes from a place of um, solidness. And again, that goes back to the trust that we have in Jesus, that he is at work, even when it seems yeah. like he isn't, um, he is one of the quotes from an endorser on your website. I really liked it. She, she said your book helped her see, um, when she closes herself off from receiving grace and forfeiting joy. And I just wanted to pose that to you because I thought that was a beautiful statement. High praise. I thought from her, her name was Bonnie Sachs. Would that be right? Is that her last name? Zakat. Okay. No, I'm totally wrong. It's a cash. Okay. Um, but when she closes herself off from receiving grace and forfeiting joy, what do you think grace and joy have to do with each other well man it's like I said it's like I said with trust like joy Mm -hmm. and grace joy and trust it's all so interconnected I mean Mm -hmm. our entire faith Mm -hmm. as Christians is founded on the most joyous news known to man because of the grace of God, because Mm -hmm. of what God has done for us. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, if I look at my own personal journey and my own story, one huge reason that I have forfeited grace in my life is because I have not truly embraced or understood or accepted that grace from God. I've always Mm -hmm. struggled with perfectionism and wanting Mm -hmm. to be good enough and Mm -hmm. all of these things. And I think when I get so laser focused on, I'm not good enough, I didn't do that perfectly, or I don't, you know, those people aren't happy with what I've done or whatever. It, it kind of like negates the grace of what God has done for right. me. And so mm-hmm. when we close ourselves off to that incredible love and overflow and abundance of grace that God offers to us, then naturally joy just kind of seeps out of our lives, right? Because it is so interconnected. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I think that grace, well, I know it is, it's offered in abundance. And yet I too often hold up my hand to it and say, let me get a little better before you, you know, give that to me. Or I don't, um, I, I don't want to need that much or ask for that much. So let me just try to get myself in a little better position, right? Yeah. before I ask for your grace. And then we, we, and then we lack the joy that comes from knowing it's just there for us, whether we deserve, we can't deserve it, but what, you know, uh, right. no matter what we do, right. It's just there for us because his love is there for us. And what, a what an experience of joy that can be. You mentioned your backstory just a little bit and part of your mm-hmm. story and receiving his grace. And, um, to the degree that you are willing, tell us just a little bit about what you have been through in order to uh, get to a place where you can write and encourage about this experience you have of embracing his joy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally happy to talk about it. Um, I mentioned at the beginning, I've always had a complicated relationship with the idea of joy. It has never come naturally to me. Even as a kid, I was very fearful and nervous, very shy, very anxious at times. Um, and very preoccupied with receiving the approval of others. Like I just kind of said, like I wanted to be good enough. I wanted people to be happy with me. I wanted to feel like God was happy with me. Like he wasn't mad at me. I didn't Mm. want to go to hell. I was afraid of that because I grew up with a Christian background. I grew up with that worldview. Um, And I think early on that kind of started a bit of a cycle of moral perfectionism in my life. Um, and so these are some of my early experiences that I would say started to sort of prepare the soil for that, those seeds of mental illness to, to later grow in my life. Um, like most teenagers, I went through a phase of sort of straying away from the worldview that I'd been raised with and was just trying to find myself, figure out who I was. But in that season, I started to make some poor choices that left me with a sense of guilt and shame because of course I was a perfectionist who wanted Mm -hmm. God to be pleased with me. And so I knew that he wasn't pleased with some of these life choices that I was making. And that created a real sort of, uh, sense of like shame and guilt and, um, like disassociation with my 
my, my experience and what mm -hmm. I believed. And it was a very difficult time because as a, an adolescent, I really didn't have the tools in my toolbox to navigate some of those negative feelings that I was starting to feel about myself. Well, and so that gets very cyclical, doesn't it? Cause you totally. make the decision and then you go to the shame feeling and then you don't yes. want to feel the shame feeling. And so you make a different decision to cover the shame feeling. Mm -hmm. Right. And then it just kind of, I think that behavior pattern just then re uh, repeats itself it just cycles just, right yes totally that's the story of my life and mm -hmm. and even to the point where I had that shame feeling and then I just felt well I can't I I'm not a good person I've done this terrible thing so I might as well just keep making these mm -hmm. terrible decisions because now God's already mad at me and I right. can't heal. And so it, it totally, it's this terrible cycle. Um, and so for me, ultimately sort of the buildup of all of that, the buildup of that shame and that guilt manifested in an eating disorder in my life that I probably started struggling with around the age of 14. Okay. And um, that, that lasted all the way through until I was about 21 is when I started to really walk towards recovery. Um, and so in that's that a long season, time. that's about a seven year window. That's a long time. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. It was depression, anxiety, and over time, even other addictions that came into my life because I was just like, how do I deal with these feelings? Because you try to do one to cover another, right? Totally. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And they just, they, they encourage each other. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had no joy like during that season, right? I was just joy didn't even seem like a possibility right. for me. Sure. Like I it was like I would, ch would go chasing it and mm -hmm. looking for a sense of fulfillment or peace or whatever. And I would go looking in all of these wrong places and, and it would just leave me emptier and emptier. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so that was like a hugely formative season on my perspective on joy, because it sort of became this almost mystical, mythical entity that I really could never achieve. Like there's no way I can get to joy. Um, because it's just impossible for somebody like me. That's really what um, my, my outlook on it was. And so years later, when, when I gave my life back to Jesus and I started getting my health back on track, first my eating disorder, and then as the years went on, dealt a little bit more with the depression and the anxiety, um, it was a long road to getting to a point where, okay, now I can actually believe that joy is possible for me. In the beginning of that journey, it was still, I, I really still pushed back on God with that and was kind of like, no, I, I still don't think that's an option. Right. But God just kind of kept me in this journey and this process. Over do you time. know, do you know what you were hoping for in those, in that season where you didn't think joy was an option, but you knew you wanted something better. I'm just curious for those who's, who are struggling and maybe they think the same thing, right? Talisi, like, I don't think that joy is an option, but I know I don't want to stay here. Do you know what you were hoping? Um, that's a great question. You know, I think I just, I just internally felt like there's something more like this is not mm, there's when something I look more, at my yeah. life, mm -hmm. because at that point I was wanting to follow Jesus. I was following Jesus and mm -hmm. I was making changes in my life and it, going through sure. the process of sanctification and God making me more like Jesus. But, um, I, I hadn't really like I guess, figured out this yeah. part of that puzzle. Mm -hmm. And that's okay because God gives us revelation in his yes. time and that's good. And we need to trust that. But um, I think I just, sometimes the I motivation, like there was more, go ahead. Yeah. I think sometimes the motivation is, I just don't want to feel like this anymore. Right. Yeah. And so, and I think then when we begin to not feel like anymore, the understanding of his grace, I will go back to that, that the, the invitation to trust him more, then I think joy can take us by surprise, um, where I just, like, I wanted to not feel this bad. I wanted to not hurt this bad, or I wanted to not turn to food or try to control food or, you know, those things yeah. that, that, and we, we all have those things. They may not be an eating disorder, but we do things to try to push the hurt or cover the shame or whatever, you know, and those yeah. things that I'm going for that aren't for me, maybe they never worked for me, but I know they're not working for me now. <laughs> uh, right. And then, um, and then God can begin to, like you said, do that work in us. And somehow when we feel like he's meeting us in our very, sometimes very dark place, mm -hmm. it does come with a sense of joy that we are seeing and known and loved. And I think that is 
one of the most beautiful things that God does for us. I want to read you a comment. Debbie Patrick is saying, I agree. This is about something we were saying earlier. When we stop looking at Jesus and looking at what others think of us or striving for perfection, we quickly mm -hmm. lose the joy that Jesus has for us. Debbie, I think you're so yes. right on that. That's a, a good, thank you for that feedback. That's a good, uh, good comment. Yeah. So, um, so talk to us a little bit about your writing journey also, because I know this is what happens to me. Sometimes you have an experience with God. He teaches you something new. You have this stirring to write it, share it, speak it, whatever that looks like in our individual lives, right? Teach it, however that looks. And then I'm, I'm, I'm guessing this would be true for you because it's true for me, but correct me if I'm wrong. But then in the process of trying to share what we have learned, we learn more, right? We learn far more. Oh. And so talk, to, <laughs> okay. So yeah. I'm not wrong about that in your no. life either. Uh, so yeah. talk to us a little bit about kind of this journey, how this book has come about to be a, such a big part of your life and what that, that process has taught you also. Yeah. I mean, the process of writing the book I'm, uh, is so deeply connected to my whole story. So what I've mm -hmm. just shared with you, like, mm -hmm. uh, and this is going back 13 years or so. I think it was 2007 when I really started working through my eating disorder. And so this has been a journey of my own personal pursuit of joy in my life, in my life, biblical joy. Um, it turns out that in 2010, I married a man who is passionate about joy and trusting God. And one of his mottos in life is to be joyful for what we have rather than sorrowful for what we lack. And mm -hmm. I always really loved that, but sometimes it felt a little bit grating for me because I was like, like, I get it okay. and I believe I'm in it, but that is hard for me. I'm going <laughs> to stop you right there because isn't it crazy how God brings, this is true in my life, the things mm -hmm. that were so welcoming. And I was so attracted to in my husband, when we were like <laughs> meeting and dating are the things that I'm like, I can't live with that now. Right. Like <laughs> it's, so hard. I, it's like, you're pushing on this stuff in me. That is so hard for me to look at. Right. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> but, <laughs> that's the hard thing, but also the beautiful thing it's about the marriage. beautiful thing. Yeah, it is, but sure. it is hard. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead though. Yeah. <laughs> but no, that, I mean, that's true. And that was one of the ways that God chose to speak to me about mm -hmm. this topic over the years. Um, and, and he has, like I said, he's had me in a process over the years, but last year I felt like he really turned up the, the dial on this kind of challenge around pursuing joy. Um, I don't know if you've ever had one of those seasons in your life where you kind of go through spiritual deja vu, where God just keeps up br bringing up oh, yes. the same thing over and over mm -hmm. and over. Right. Yes. And that's what happened for me. You know, it was in a devotional book or it was in my Bible reading. And then I was asked on multiple occasions to speak at different events on the topic of joy. And so mm -hmm. I was kind of like, okay, I really feel like I'm not an expert on this topic, right. but God is really trying to get my attention here. And so what I ended up doing was I took a month, I think it was the entire month of July last summer. And I just did a deep dive study into the topic of biblical joy. And so every morning I kind of made myself a reading plan of different passages that um, talked about joy. And so every morning it's everywhere I, in there, isn't it? It's everywhere. So it's all over. It's the all place. over the and place. It's, yeah. And it's places that you never even noticed before. Right. Like I talked about Romans five, right. like the word right. rejoice. Like yes. I never connected that before. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, so I kind of every morning would read a passage and then journal on it. And then I would kind of create for myself an application activity that I could work on through the day just to be intentional. And then I would reflect back on my day at the end of the day, sort of see how I did with that. Did I choose joy, those kinds mm -hmm. of things. And that was really formative. It, for me, it was like life changing. But I also ended up with like 60,000 words of just raw journaling. <laughs> and I knew that this was going to be become a book. Okay. I didn't know what that would look like. I didn't know how I didn't know when um, I kind of chewed on that content for the rest of the year. When we met in October at the mm -hmm. Women's Speakers Collective Boot Camp, I spoke on joy because I had just done all this research and this was a topic I was becoming very passionate about. Um, and it, but it wasn't until about January of 2020 when I started to actually do, start drafting this book. Okay. Um, it took me a long time. That's a lot of content to sort of organize and figure out, okay, how am I going to take all of this journaling and create a book. Um, but once I sort of had a bit of a framework and started writing, 
it came together pretty quickly. And mm -hmm. so for me, the process, what did I learn? You asked, um, you know, did I learn as I was writing? Cause I, I did all that learning last sure. year, mm -hmm. but man, like the whole book was a revelation for me. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like God just kept bringing new things as I would go through that process. Um, and so now it, it just changed my entire perspective mm -hmm. on what joy was all about. And, and this idea, so the book is based on this sort of metaphor of life as a mountain mm -hmm. and we're climbing this mountain. And I used to really see joy as the mountain that we're trying to climb. Like once we get to the summit, once we reach that kind of pinnacle of the mountain, that's where joy happens. And that's why joy is so hard to achieve because mm -hmm. I won't ever feel it until I get there. Get there. Mm -hmm. But God kind of changed my perspective in writing and helped me to realize, no, no, joy isn't the mountain. Joy can be experienced anywhere you are on the mountain because the, the mountain is just the journey of life. Mm -hmm. And so as we're climbing through the journey of life, we can experience joy. We don't have to be at the summit to experience it. And I kind of relate the summit in the book to kind of our final experience of glory and, and ultimate joy in heaven. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, there is this different experience of joy that we're going to that we're going to have when we are ultimately right. in God's presence. There is nothing like that, but we can also experience biblical joy throughout the journey of life. And so this was a big learning curve for me, but, but yeah. really cool to kind of dig into that metaphor and this analogy in my mind. Yeah. I think that's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. I want to post this one last question to you because I feel like joy in my life, joy and gratitude are so linked also we've talked about trust yeah. and and grace and <clears throat> some other things that are really linked to joy for me when i'm feeling like i'm not receiving joy but i'll put that responsibility on me i will i really will because i'm i'm seasoned enough in this journey with jesus that i know it's always available so if i'm not yeah. feeling it if i don't not even feeling it if i'm not uh, experiencing it yeah. i'm not receiving it and so one of the things that really helps me turn my eyes and focus them in the right direction is gratitude. And, um, and when I, when I really say what, uh, I have a, a author friend who asks the question, what's not wrong in your life today, when I will ask myself that question, right, then it's how I can like tap that back into that well of joy, yeah. if that's a good way to say that. So I just kind of, as we're wrapping up, uh, gratitude? What, what role does that play in your life in all of this? Yeah, it's huge. I love that question. And I'm going to do what's that. not I'm wrong in your life today. That I, question. I, here's her name is Nicole Deese. She's a Christian fiction author. And she was on the page, I don't know, several weeks ago. And she had posed that question on her Facebook. And I just loved it. And so I asked her that kind of as we were getting talking, but I have thought of it almost daily ever since yeah. that what's not wrong in your life today. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I love it. And there, there is a section, um, in my book about gratitude because I think it is very, very key. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that it just, it, it's a, it's, it's a perspective shifter when we choose uh, gratitude. Perspective shifter. Just, that's good. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. it just changes mm -hmm. where we're focused. And mm -hmm. like I said, focus is key as well. Yeah. And so I, I talk about focus. I talk about gratitude in one of the chapters that's titled the gear. So the gear mm -hmm. that we need to navigate the mountain yes. of life. And these are some of those really important pieces. And gratitude is one of those things that's going to shift our perspective away from it's like the, the motto that I said, my husband holds like not being sorrowful yeah. for what we lack, but choosing to be yes. joyful for what we have, yes. choosing to be grateful for what we have instead yes. of focusing on the lack. And so, yes. um, yeah, I think that's a, it's a huge game changer. It's a part of intentionality. Like this kind of joy that we're talking about, it's not easy. It doesn't come naturally, but we have to be intentional about it. Mm -hmm. And that comes when we take these intentional steps, like choosing to be grateful, making a list of, okay, what are the things that are not wrong in my life? Yeah, exactly. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I just think it shifts the perspective from the negative to the positive. Well, and it almost to me brings us all the way back to our opening of this discussion when we were talking about your strategy games. Okay. Just allow me, well, I mean, serious, right? Like what are the tools that we have in front of us? What do we know to be true? Mm -hmm. And can we put those tools together in a joy strategy, if you will, mm -hmm. because it, I think so often every day is not 
a day that we birth a baby, right? Every day is not a day where the joy is like, well, that was a day I felt joy. Like, hopefully that's true. If we, birth, you know, what those yeah. kind of high moments is what I'm trying to say. We have those life moments where probably a lot of us would go to and say, that was a day that's joy, right? But I believe he wants us to be able to have those in our everyday experiences, as I know you do too, because that's what you're writing about mm -hmm. and speaking about. And um, I think it's a good question to say, what is our strategy? Because it is possible. And how do we uh, show gratitude, demonstrate gratitude? How do we, you know, put our trust back in Jesus and those kind of things, that kind of playlist, what's the song, if you will, right, that we're running yeah. um, in our mind. So, um, so I have good. a couple of comments I just want to read to you. Um, Lisa has said a couple of things. She talks about her marriage and says, I think we need, or my husband says, I think we need to challenge ourselves. She's like, that's a red flag. I'm not going to like this. She's talking about her. And she says, um, she talk, she's talking about James where James says, consider it joy. That's one of the verses. Yeah. That we haven't like touched on at all today, but um, she's just saying she's learned so much from studying that. And uh, also agreeing with the, oh, uh, Linda is saying, Linda Muth is saying, what's not wrong in your life today? That's a great question. I agree. I, and I, I give credit where credit is due. That's Nicole Deese uh, yeah. that, that posed that question. But it has been, uh, as you said, a game changer for me as well. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes when I'm feeling that way, when I've got that, mm, I don't know, lack of joy sort of feeling or self-focus. I mean, most of the time it comes from a self-focus, focusing on what you're sorrowful for as your husband, you know, uh, puts. Uh, and I think that that kind of question can just put the, uh, hit the reset button, at yeah. least on my day, it can. So totally. yeah. any closing thoughts for us? Anything else you'd like to, uh, to say uh, before we sign off this morning? Man, I'm just really thankful to, to have had this conversation. It's been encouraging me for me. And uh, yeah, I, I am, I'm really grateful that you would be willing to, to talk about this topic because I think that, like I said earlier, there's a lot at stake. We have a responsibility yeah. as Christians to address this issue in our own lives. And not only that, but let's face it, w when we don't choose joy, when we don't prioritize the discipline of joy, our kids learn that from us. Absolutely. And if we're going to uh, sort of forfeit endurance and character and hope in our lives by not pursuing biblical joy, then we're going to send the next generation into a future devoid of endurance and character mm -hmm. and hope. And that is a crisis that I don't, I don't mm -hmm. want for my kids. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just think it's so important that we look at this crisis, that we address it in our own lives. And then we figure out how we can carefully, compassionately help others to mm -hmm. work through it as well. Mm -hmm. I agree. And as someone who shares uh, probably differently, but also the same, this is not a natural response yeah. for me. I am more of a half glass, a glass half empty kind of personality. A lot of mm -hmm. times I'm a perfectionist uh, also, and I struggle with some of those things in, in myself, but this is something that I really want to grow more in. I know the Lord is challenging me to grow more in it. And I appreciate your book and your message um, just for a, a, another way, like you're saying, another way for me to be reminded that God has more to offer mm -hmm. me than what I'm experiencing currently. So um, mm -hmm. thank you very much for your, for sharing your story and for writing this and sharing with us today. And um, you're just, you're a delight. Italicy's website is Talisi Gara. I will put that in the comments and also in the show awesome. notes. So that can be linked. Her book can be ordered through the website. Is that right? They're, yeah, right now we're yeah. only <laughs> offering pre-orders on signed copies. Um, okay. So it's a little, a little bit more than what cost is a little bit more than what will be on Amazon, but the book okay. will release on Amazon this coming Sunday. So okay. we're only a week away. If you head to my website uh -huh. and just click on the Joy Like a Mountain book page, yes. you can sign up also for a, a mailing list where you're going to get a link directly to order the book as soon as it's available on Amazon. So okay. um, that's probably the best way to just keep in touch and make sure you don't miss this book okay. dropping on Amazon. And you're, um, you're on Facebook and uh, other, are those things linked on your website too? Can they follow you on the Facebook different places Instagram. from your, yeah, yeah, okay. You'll be able okay. to find that on so all on the website. things through your website. So yeah. I will link the website. Debbie is saying, thank you, Talisi, for sharing your story. I enjoyed starting my day hearing about joy mm. so thank you debbie for watching linda least to some of the others that were watching today thank you so much for your comments and your encouragement and talisi thank you for your time um, until next time we will sign off and say peace thank you i am so glad our conversation took us to a place where talisi talked about doing research for this book 
I want to learn from someone who has spent that much time in scripture studying in order to learn for herself what God would have her share with others. Talisee's book, Joy Like a Mountain, can be purchased on Amazon, and I have put the link in the show notes for you. Thank you so much for listening. I pray that wherever your day takes you, you are walking in the confident knowledge that you are a beloved, cherished child of God. Peace.